Ooh, how I just love a woke beta male cat fight to end the work week. It's Friday afternoon, the final video of the work week. We like to keep things light here on the channel on Friday afternoon, send everyone home from work in a good mood for the weekend. And what could put you in a better mood than two graduates of Woke U in a cat fight against each other? Two graduates of Woke U arguing with each other about who has the biggest cucumber. Before I go any further, let me just get this out of the way. The combination of Stephen A. Smith and Skip Bayless on first take, in my opinion, was the best combo in sports television, at least for their era. I mean, Dan Patrick, Keith Olbermann, they were unbelievable together on SportsCenter in the 90s. Stephen A. and Skip Bayless, though, they possessed the number one requirement that you need to have a successful television show. It's something that cannot be taught. It can't be forced. You either have it or you don't. It's the same thing you need to have a good, successful romantic relationship. Chemistry. Stephen A. and Skip Bayless, they gelled together. The formula for first take, it was simple. Skip would float some outrageous, ridiculous theory that no one in their right mind would agree with. Stephen A. would bombastically overreact to it, which would create an argument. It was entertaining television. I mean, they found the formula for success and people were paying attention. I went back to September of 2015. I pulled the ratings for first take. When they had both Skip and Stephen A., the show was pulling six, seven, sometimes 800,000 viewers. Skip Bayless can't hit 200,000 with Shay Shay. Hey, it's me, Shay Shay. Straight men think I'm gay gay. Shannon Sharp, God love him. Shannon Sharp, he does his best to impersonate Stephen A. Smith, but it's just never clicked with Skip Bayless. It's never worked. And the reason it doesn't work the impersonator is never better than the original version. Now, Stephen A. Smith, he has also been unable to replicate the success that he experienced with Skip Bayless. As you guys know, first take, it went through an overhaul in the summer of 2020. The show was renamed Woke Take. It featured Deacon Smith, who had just joined Woke United Methodist. It featured Deacon Smith, going off on these tangents about mythical racism. The NFL is racist. They don't have enough black head coaches. They don't have enough black quarterbacks. They don't have enough black owners. They don't have enough black fans. Max Kellerman, he would sit across from Stephen A. Smith, just nodding in agreement, waiting for Stephen A. to unzip his pants. Eventually, Stephen A. grew tired of Max Kellerman constantly kissing his ass, constantly apologizing for his white privilege. The audience grew tired of it too because ratings for Woke Take sucked to the bottom of the Woke Sea. Stephen A., he ends up firing Max Kellerman for being too white, and he brings on a rotation of dumbasses to constantly agree with him instead. As a result, Woke Take now sucks. Undisputedly Woke sucks. Both Stephen A. and Skip Bayless, they suck without each other. Now, we have two of the wokest talking heads in the mainstream sports media arguing with each other again. Except this time, they're not arguing about sports. They're not arguing about the Dallas Cowboys or LeBron James. No, 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 no. They're arguing about who made who successful. Part of me is like, who fucking cares? But this cat fight between woke beta males, it's entertaining nonetheless. It all started with Stephen A's appearance on JJ Reddick's podcast. Now, before we get into that, let me just go ahead and dispel a myth real quick. I'm so fucking tired of seeing this fantasy. Stephen A. Smith likes to claim that Woke Take is number one in the ratings. Skip Bayless, he likes to claim that First Take was number one before he brought Stephen A. Smith on board. And then they were number one for three or four years when they were together. This is 100% bullshit. It's a fantasy. First Take was never number one in the ratings. Woke Take has damn sure never been number one. Hell, they've never been the number one show on their own fucking network. Every once in a while, I'll see Stephen A. Smith tweet, Woke Take is surging in the ratings. We are number one in our time slot. Yeah, 
You are the number one sports opinion show on at 10 o'clock in the morning. You only have one competitor, undisputedly woke with Skip and Shay Shay Gay Gay. This would be like me saying, I have the number one channel on YouTube. Then in small print, amongst channels named Behind the Line. It's another example of someone in the mainstream media giving you a partial truth. Anyway, Stephen A. Smith, he's on J.J. Reddick's podcast, and they start talking about how he was brought on to First Take. Watch for yourself. Skip Bayless was doing his thing with First Take, having the two live stews, Jamel Hill, Rob Parker, and various other people debating against him. And then in 2012, they weren't satisfied with the numbers. They weren't satisfied with the ratings, the rev level of revenue that was being generated. Skip Bayless comes to me in the parking lot. Uh, on, on the campus of ESPN in Bristol, Connecticut. And he says, I know you got your plans. You love the NBA. You love being out on the road. You love being in the locker room. But he said, but I need you. He said, I can't. I've done all that I could to take this as far as I could go. I need you to do this for me, please. He said, I just need three years. He said, I think we'll knock it out the park. I thought about it. Those were clearly my best options. They weren't about to give me my own show or anything like that at the time. I said, I thought about it for a couple of days. I said, all right, I'll do it. One month later, we were number one. And we've been number one ever since. Okay, as you can see, Stephen A. Smith, he frames the narrative like Skip Bayless was begging him to be on the show. I need you, Stephen A. Please help me. My ratings are terrible. They keep giving me Jamel Hill as a co-host. She scares the shit out of me with her hideous looking O face. I'm begging you, please save my career. I, this is completely laughable. The ego of this motherfucker, the absolute ungratefulness for a man who literally saved the career of Stephen A. Smith. Now, before I go further into that, let me play the response from Skip Bayless. I rarely, rarely agree with this man. I rarely defend Skip Bayless. I'm not even going to make fun of him today for being emotional about this because if I were Skip Bayless, I would be pissed off too. I saved someone's career and 10 years later, they reshaped the narrative acting like they saved mine? Fuck you. Here is Skip's response. Then we'll go into it a bit further. Roll the film. It was so recklessly inaccurate. It was such shocking fabrication. And my first thought when Ernestine sent this to me to peruse, I thought, how could my brother Stephen A turn on me like that? Stephen A was suggesting that he saved and then made first take. How can you save and make a show that was already as big a billion to one success story as ESPN had ever seen? The ratings and the revenues were impossibly great when Stephen A joined me in 2012. With Stephen A as my partner, First Take would never touch the NFL Monday ratings that it hit in 2011, pre-Stephen A. And I had taken First Take as far as I could? Seriously? I, I was just getting started. The rocket had just launched the year before in 2011. I don't know, maybe every time someone goes to write about the all-time amazing success story, the, the against all odds rise of first take, they will accept as gospel that Stephen A saved and made first take. But trust me, that is utter untruth. Like I said, I am not gonna give him shit for being emotional. Now, I don't know if I would be at the point of breaking into tears like it almost seems Skip Bayless was, but he's got every right to be upset about this. Before Skip brought Stephen A to first take, his career was fucking dead. Compared to where he is now, he was a complete failure. Now, I'm not going to go as far as to say he was a huge embarrassing failure like Bamani Jones. Like I say all the time, no one does failure like Bamani Jones. I don't put anyone else in that category except maybe the WNBA. But before Skip Bayless offered him a life raft, 
Stephen A's media career, at least on television, was on life support. His career in television started on CNN SI in 1999. By 2002, the network ceased to exist because they weren't drawing ratings. 2005, ESPN gives Stephen A a nightly TV show, quite frankly, with Stephen A. Smith. Quite frankly, the ratings were disastrous. At the time, no one gave a shit about the opinion of Stephen A. Smith. ESPN canceled the show in 2007. For the next two years, Stephen A. was a bench player at ESPN. He was the fill-in guy when the heavy hitters were on vacation. Mike Wilbon goes to the Bahamas. Call up Stephen A. He's available. Jim Rohn goes to Paris. Call up Stephen A. He's always available. Basically, Stephen A. Smith was a non-factor. He was treading water, barely staying afloat. May 2009, Stephen A. announces on his website, I'm leaving ESPN. I'm going to pursue more prosperous ventures. Let me translate that bullshit for you. ESPN fired him. It was one of those, your services are no longer needed moments. His contract expired. ESPN told the media at the time, we're just going to move in a different direction. That's code for, we don't think you're worth the money. A couple of years later, ESPN, they decide, we're going to bring Stephen A. Smith back. But again, he was a bench player, a non-factor. He's hosting a local radio show on ESPN Radio in New York City. He's on the road covering the NBA. Spring of 2012, Skip Bayless... I mean, there's just no other way to say this. Spring of 2012, Skip Bayless saved the career of Stephen A. Smith. He brings him on first take, and the rest, the rest is history. Stephen A. Smith would not be where he is today without Skip Bayless. Stephen A. Smith wouldn't have the clout that he has at ESPN today without Skip Bayless. Here's the thing, and I've said this before. In order for Stephen A. to be effective, he needs an enemy. Not like a, a I hate you enemy, but he needs a foil. He needs someone to play off of. Someone who is going to challenge his stupidity. Someone who will challenge his ignorance. Or in the case of Skip Bayless, someone who will make Stephen A. Smith seem rational. Someone who will make him look intelligent. Skip Bayless played this role to perfection. He would serve up Stephen A. with a nice fastball of bullshit, and Stephen A., he would become overdramatic and knock it out of the park. It was entertaining television, and Woke Take is not entertaining today. And it damn sure wasn't entertaining with Max Kellerman because everyone is always agreeing with Stephen A.'s bullshit. Think about today when Woke Take will make headlines. Most of the time, it's because J.J. Reddick or Chris Russo challenged Stephen A. and he couldn't fight back. Like I said, I completely understand the anger from Skip Bayless. This dude's career was fucking dead. You saved it and he shapes the narrative that he saved you? <laughs> Stephen A. He took to Twitter to address this yesterday and as you can see here, he borrowed the woke shovel from Rob Manfred and made the situation worse. He starts off by saying, I didn't lie about a damn thing. Um, your entire narrative was a lie. You're pretending that you saved Skip Bayless when he saved you. Then you had the audacity to say that Skip needed you? Dude, it was the other way around. You needed him. Skip Bayless was already at the top of the mountain. He already had his own show at ESPN. You were off doing local radio. You were going from airport to airport, begging Dwight Howard or LeBron James for an interview. Stephen A. Smith, he ended the so-called explanation by saying that he would settle this matter with Skip Bayless privately. Now, as you guys know, I have inside sources within Woke United Methodist. One of my sources, they were present when Stephen A. called Skip Bayless. He tells me, that Stephen A, he has arranged a nice weekend trip this weekend for he and his brother in Woke. They're going to travel to Miami together to put an end to this cat fight and have a nice Woke reunion. 
Stephen A., he's already stopped by the florist to grab a dozen woke roses. He made sure the hotel room was stocked with plenty of cucumbers. He brought his copy of Fifty Shades of Grey with him so they didn't run out of ideas. I would imagine their hands and arms are going to be exhausted come Monday from all the woke hugs that will be given this weekend. But let me know what you think. If you were Skip Bayless in this scenario, would you be upset about this? I think the ego of Stephen A. Smith got the best of him. This would definitely piss me off, but let me know what you think. Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys tomorrow.